Welcome to the second in our PIX Racer series. In the first video, we took a look at this board and explained what it actually was, how it came about, and had a rough idea of what these many, many connectors on this thing actually do. In this next video in the series, what we're going to do is to talk about how we can actually test it, make sure it's all working, the options for the ground station control software, and also a couple of options for the firmware we can pop on here too. Then we'll connect it up to a computer, make sure that we can actually see it working, start the configuration. We won't be able to finish the configuration because a board like this without all the other things plugged into it can't be configured completely so uh, we'll have to plug in things like the GPS and other stuff to complete that step and then what we'll do is we'll go through and talk about then how you would make those connections to things like the external GPS with the magnetometer, the receiver, the power distribution board and power module that we have here which is that board there and then we'll also talk about the optional buzzer and switch and once that's all together we'll then have a quick chat about the order and how you connect the motors up and once that's finished that's probably going to be as far as we can get in this video the next one then will be ready to go through the calibration and set up again in far more detail with everything connected make sure the radio is working the GPS is happy that it can get a fix that the magnetometers are all calibrated and working in tandem and then at that point we can do our first test hover but that will be in the next video so the first thing we need to talk about here is to actually go and talk about some of the software options there is a lot of choice now for ground station software that will both configure and set the board up and flash the firmware too. We're looking at three here, but this is no means a definitive list. If you go on the website and look for ground station control software APM or ground station control software Pixhawk, you'll find others as well. These are just to give you a flavor and kind of explain why we're using QGround control today. Mission Planner on the left hand side is the one that we've used in pretty much every video on the channel that we've done up till now. We've used it to flash APM 2.5, 2.6 boards, APM 3.1, Pixhawks, you name it, and it has been fantastic. It's a really robust platform, it's been supported by 3DR heavily until recently, and it works great even on slower netbooks as well. Downside is it runs really good on Windows, it has limited support on iOS. So if you're running Apple, this is probably not going to be the option that you're going to plump for. Next one in the middle is APM Planner, another variant on Mission Planner. This one does pretty much the same thing. You can even see the layouts very similar. This one though does support other operating systems as well. So it gives you full support for Windows, iOS and also Linux. Last one we've got here on the right hand side is the one we'll use, Q Ground Control. Q Ground Control is still in development, it's very much the new kid on the block. We're taking a little bit of a risk here by using Q Ground Control before it's released, but I wanted to show you something a little bit different. And the other reason we're using Q Ground Control is that we want to use the PX4 firmware, which brings us to the last bit on the slide. At the bottom, there are two versions of the firmware you can put on a board like this. You can use Arducopter or PX4. Now this can be a little bit confusing because PX4 was also the name of one of the predecessors of the Pixhawk, the actual physical hardware, but the PX4 is also the name of the firmware. But don't let that confuse you, it's actually relatively straightforward. Let me explain the difference between the two. Arducopter is part of the Mission Planner 3DR project. So you have Arducopter, Arduplane, Ardu Rover. There's loads of different versions of this depending on the craft that you're going to run. It's very mature, it's highly tested, and very portable. So it'll run on things like APMs and Pix hooks as well. I love the Arducopter stuff, it works beautifully. Or the other option, you have PX4. PX4 is firmware is only there to support the PixHawk platforms. So it doesn't have to worry about having to run on lots of multiple boards and it doesn't have to worry about all the regression testing and stuff that Arducopter and others do. So it's a slightly different implementation and it does things slightly differently too. But we've never used PX4 on a PixHawk on the channel so that's the one that we're going to use. So now we know we're going to use Q ground control and we're also going to use PX4. Let's plug this board into a laptop and just make sure it's all working. And then once we know it is, we can talk about how we're going to connect it all up ready for the next video.
So we've downloaded and installed QGround Control onto this laptop. Now this is a slightly different netbook from the one that we normally use. This is a much more powerful laptop and this is because unfortunately at the moment QGround Control doesn't behave very well on slower machines. I've tried it on a number of them and it was failing every time. So if you are looking to use this on something like a netbook or a lower spec tablet PC running Windows, you're going to have a little bit of a problem. But if you are using a real computer with a decent processor and a good amount of memory, it's going to run fine. So we're going to install the firmware onto the board. Now the board we're looking at here is actually one that's already been flashed. I've tested it. So we know it's going to work. So we'll go through the process. But when we plug it in, it is going to show you on the ground station all of the things that need to be set up next. And that's what we'll do in the next video. Top tip, of course, is because this thing is a PixHawk. This Pix Racer needs to have an SD card in the SD card slot in order for the firmware update to work. If you don't have an SD card in there, it isn't going to like it at all. So the first thing we'll do then is we'll install the firmware, but we'll plug the board into the computer. Now the nice thing is, is the drivers and things are installed apart of Q ground control. So the first time you plug it in, it should automatically configure. And there we have all of the things that need to be set up on this board. It's a brand new board. The really nice thing is if we turn the audio outputs off, uh, you'll hear the ground station talking to us and letting know when we have problems. So at the moment, it says that we have a problem with things like the airframe, the radio needs setting up, the flight modes need configuring, the sensors need calibrating. The only thing it's happy with at the moment is power. And you can see down here on the left-hand side, Everything that we need to go through and set up is a nice bright red color. And that's a really clear indicator in here of what we've got to do. And we're going to go through each of those and set those up in the next video. But what we'll do here is we'll spend a little bit of time updating the firmware. So let's click on the firmware tab. It'll ask us to unplug our PixHawk or radio from the USB because it's putting it into bootloader mode. So we'll unplug it. Wait for it to say. Here we go. That's the kind of updates and audio you get from the ground station. We'll plug the USB back in. And it will immediately ask us what kind of firmware that we want. And again, going back to what we've just discussed, we can either go for PX4 or the Ardu Pilot. Now, we're doing this because we want PX4, so we're going to click OK. Now what it will do, it will go to the internet and download that firmware from the internet. Then it will go through and erase the board. And then what it will do is it will then update and flash the firmware up to the flight controller. And then once it's done that, it will reboot and it will look like it was when we first came into QGround Control where it will basically tell us all the things that we need to go and configure. So as you can see in the image, the board itself the little light is flashing away like crazy here as it's all going up. I'm not speeding up this part of the video. This is how long it takes to go down the USB cable. And there we are, we have the upgrade complete. The board is going to reboot, and once it's rebooted, there we are, the nice little flashing blue light, it's ready. So <laughs> That's why I had the audio turned off when we came in, because she does talk to you an awful lot. So here now we have to go and go through all of these different things, just get rid of all those errors, to get up ready to fly. So let's talk about how we're going to plug everything together so that next time we come into this screen in the next video, we can actually go through these and configure them all up. The first thing we'll talk about is where you plug in the radio receiver. Now, as we've talked about, the radio receiver is only really going to support S bus and PPM. Uh, there's some extra bits and bobs it'll do as well. But if you have a PWM receiver, the kind that has lots of different pinouts and wants each pin connected for each channel, that isn't going to work. Where we're going to install it on here is on this top connector. Now, the connector itself uh, goes into 
the receiver. The way we have it actually configured on this model here, here we have a trusty D4R2, it's running PPM and the cable itself has a couple of connections. You have the main one here that we've plugged in for PPM, so that's going to give us the channels, and this extra black wire here that's on its own is actually for RSSI. Now we're going to see if we can get that to work, so we're going to pop that on the pin that gives us RSSI output, so that's pretty straightforward to set up and configure. So that is plugging into that port here at the front of the board, and that's the radio receiver installed pretty straightforward. Next one we'll talk about then is the power module. Now the power module itself plugs into this port here underneath. So our power module, the way we've installed it in this frame is a little bit unusual because it already had a power distribution board here at the bottom, uh, but it actually plugs in there. That is it on ours. And it goes down and plugs into the power distribution board which is hidden away under here. So that is going to provide the power and also all the voltage sensing too. So that's dead easy. There's two cables that came with the kits that we had. There was a short version, which we looked at in the very first video, and this is using the much longer version, which allows us to cite the power distribution board well out of the way of all the other electronics. It is worthwhile us very quickly talking about the power distribution board. So the actual battery connector that we're going to plug into goes into the power distribution board and then the power distribution board goes into whatever system you have on the craft. So in ours, the way it works is the voltage comes into the power distribution board and I've uh, rigged it so that then the power distribution board goes in to the bottom plate which then sends the voltage around to each of the ESCs. Now there is a much smaller version of this coming which will make it a little bit neater for those of you that are building this in the future. So check on the website to see if there's the smaller version of this. This one is built so that it can act as the power distribution board and the power module for the flight controller uh, and the smaller version is uh, would have been actually better for me. It would have been a slightly smaller fit but this is what we've got. Next thing we'll plug in then is the GPS. Now the GPS plugs into the port that's actually underneath the radio receiver at the front of the board. So on the naked board that we have here, it's actually this one at the bottom at the very front. That's where we're plugging in. Now it has a number of wires on it because what it's actually doing is not only connecting up to the GPS, but it's also connecting the SDA and SCL lines up to the external magnetometer as well. So when we're mounting this, we do need to make sure for the GPS that a couple of things are going on. First of all, that the GPS is orientated in the right direction. Uh, you'll usually find there's like an XYZ or an arrow on it or something if it has a compass on it. So at the moment we have it set so that the compass front is here on the GPS. The compass front is obviously the front of the board here on the basic flight controller and we've got them pointing in exactly the same direction. We're going to need that for when we calibrate the compass in the next video because it's going to calibrate both compasses at the same time and if one of the compasses isn't identical to the other one it's going to cause us a couple of problems. Second thing we need to consider is this is on a little 3D printed mount. Uh, I've got this on Thingiverse for those of you that are interested. And it is as far away from the power electronics as I could physically get it. And that's because magnetometers are super sensitive to electromagnetic fields and all of the amperages and the power flowing around the rest of the system will affect a magnetometer. So I've done two things on this one to make sure it flies. One, put the GPS with the auxiliary magnetometer way out of the way. And the other thing I've done that you can probably just about make out is I've put a piece of moo metal uh, mounted it underneath where the flight controller is just to try and shield it as well as I can from all of the electromagnetic fields for the onboard compass as well. We'll see how well the onboard compass copes, uh, but uh, if it doesn't work very well, then we'll just have to use the external one that's up here out the way. Last things then to connect, and these are optional, are these two things here, which is the uh, arming button and the buzzer. And this is one cable where it's already set up and you just plug it into the side. So on the naked board, we're plugging it into, when the camera catches up, this little connector here. You just plug everything in and um, and that's good to go. We will see how we get on with that. We might take those off. It's one of those things that I'm not sure is going to be of any use. So now we have it all connected up, 
then we're ready to plug it back into Q Ground Control and actually go through the configuration and take care of all those red flashing pieces, do the calibration of the accelerometers, the gyroscopes, set the uh, what level feels like and also do the setup and bits and bobs of the compass as well. So join us for that next instalment where we'll continue the setup of this board and hopefully at the end of the next video we'll be able to do a little test hover. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.